This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices Live on Facebook. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're going to have a little fun tonight, uh, back to a more regular Mac Voices Live format, where you are invited into uh, the, the Zoom room with us. So if you want to be part of the show, by all means, check out the chat uh, for this video, because that's kind of why you're watching, uh, if you're watching live. And you should find a link there for uh, for the Zoom, and just come on in. We'll let you in, and you can tell us what you think about what we're talking about. And if you just want to hang out and watch and comment in the chat, that's fine, too. Please do. We'll watch that and uh, try to respond to you. So this evening, first up, uh, the guests we have, at least so far, Mr. David Ginsberg. David, good to see you. Good to see you, Chuck. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks That'd for coming fun. by. Yeah. Absolutely. And the lady who just uh, pranked me with her shirt, Ms. <laughs> Kelly Gamont. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm just... <laughs> 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 oh, that was cruel. Uh, that, that, that was, was cruel. 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 <laughs> it's like, oh my oh God, my there's gosh. a gear and now it's not moving. That's even worse. Yeah. We're, we're frozen. Oh, good move, Kelly. Very good move. I <laughs> try. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I, I've started trying to at least have a topic or two to, to start us off. Um, and uh -huh. if we if we go in other directions, that's fine, too. But uh, last week was the 12th anniversary, which I just can't believe, of the App Store. And mm -hmm. I, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the implications of this, um, not just for Apple, but also for the developers who contribute apps to the App Store and what it's meant for them and what it's meant for us as users, uh, because it really took the iPhone and later the iPad and just expanded its capabilities exponentially. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, harking back for a second to the introduction of the iPhone when Steve Jobs had said at that point, you know, well, just web apps, that'll be, that'll be good enough and that'll be it. And, mm -hmm. you know, then eventually agreed to an app store, or at least depending on which stories you listen to, you know, <laughs> um, as to whether it was really his idea or somebody else's idea, whether he had to be talked into it or whether this is the plan all along. Um, looking back, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course, but it feels like that maybe that was a little naive given the the speed and the uh, the coverage we had that many years ago. But still, you know, it, you could still do a lot of stuff with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was taking a while for things to work out. And then they decided to tap the, the power of the phone and kind of the rest is history. So, Kelly, I mean, I know you've mm -hmm. talked about this some on your shows, but yeah. where do you stand? What, what are your feelings about this? How important has the App Store been to Apple? Well, I think it's massive, uh, primarily because... Uh, it let you turn your slab of glass into what you wanted it to be. So, and even more so, you know, now uh, as we get more horsepower and there are more unbelievably creative people who are joining the app store to do interesting things, um, you get, you know, you get things like camera plus. So if what you really want to do is level up your photography game, it's very easy to do that by uh, installing some interesting camera apps and some photo editing software. And then, uh, whatever your share mechanism of choice is, you use that too. And then, you know, other people can see your work. Um, if you want it to be video, you can do the same thing. You can install some video, some cool video recording apps. You can install some video editing software and you can do all of that right from your phone. Same for podcasts. If you are a writer, you can install text editors on there and you can, you know, you can use dictation or, or hook up a Bluetooth keyboard or whatever you want and turn and turn this into what you want it to be. And, uh, you know, f like it stopped being a phone at least like three generations ago. It stopped being a phone that can also do text messages and let you surf the web and check your email. And it became, depending who you ask, like if you ask me, it became a camera that takes phone calls and can send text messages. Like, because that's the thing I use on it the most. And for other people, it's a text communicator that can also 
take phone calls and pictures, you know, whatever. So there are a lot of things that go into it that, uh, that, that can allow you to turn it into something that you want. And that's why like the other day on our show, when we were talking about the app store's birthday, the thing that I was kind of thinking aloud about was, um, that the app store was at least as big a deal as the iPhone was because it allowed people to turn it into what they wanted it to be. And if what you want it to be is an arcade machine, it can be, you know, like whatever shape it needs to take, you can do that. And as a bonus, it takes phone calls and does texts and you can see Facebook and email and whatever else, you know, that people want to do with the computer in their pocket. David, uh, well, first of all, let's welcome Warren Squar uh, to the show. Warren, thanks for being here. Good to see Hi, you. Warren. Hey, Warren. Uh, I put on my good t-shirt and uh, pants for you guys. <laughs> well, well, thank you. But we would have taken any pants at all Ooh, that would have been yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, for, all, the for all you know. For all you know. No, no, don't. Don't. Okay. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and Chuck was worried about my shirt. Hey, guys, yeah, uh, really. Your shirt I wasn't good. worried about it, Kelly. It just uh, it, it, it threw me. <laughs> I can't even tell what I'm looking at. It looks like a shirt. Oh, I have that shirt and I love it. Yeah. Shirt. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Panic. Yeah. David, how about you? Um, you know, what what do you think of about 12 years of the App Store? Yeah, I mean, it just, I, I think back, I mean, again, remember, I, I didn't have the first iPhone, so I, I didn't experience having the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the phone at first because the first iPhone didn't have an app store. So but when, yep. the, when the app store came out, um, yeah, it was just phenomenal. And, and I can't believe 12 years later, it, uh, I mean, two billion, I think they said do- dollars plus has been paid out to all developers. You've got uh, the ecosystems just beyond which anything conceivably imaginable. Um, and I, I just really think that it, it, it just really is just evolved into such a, such a economy. It really almost, I should be a good word to, to say what it is, uh, because, uh, the, uh, the app store just is just continues to evolve and, and just continues to add more and more developers. And, you know, we, we quoted, I think, what was it? Uh, two, two and a half million developers are out there now that are developing for, for something, whether it be either Mac or iOS. Now we'll probably experience both at the same time. Um, so, quite quite a, a quite a feat i think is uh, really what i would probably say warren i know you're getting in in here kind of late uh, i don't know if you heard the other comments or not but what does the app store mean to you after yeah no I, I heard some of it and i i think i heard kelly talk about it on her show uh yeah i i, I just remember having it at the iphone before the app store and <laughs> shortly after shortly after um Shortly after it came out, people started doing like web-based apps um, that we would add to our home screen, I think, or we would just go to. And what was there, Kelly? There was a, like a couple of games, a calculator app maybe, uh, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But basically, it wasn't Flash. I don't think, and I'm not even sure yeah. what it was using. But uh, yeah, so that was like, yeah, you know, we were hurting like for JavaScript it. JavaScript or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ninja yeah. Ropes is that the one I'm thinking of? That like that was possibly. one. Yeah. Um, I mean, like that. That's really early. That may have been a really early App Store game that I'm just misremembering. I, I kind of remember like a calculate, like a web app or something. There was a web. So yeah, a couple others. Yeah. So we were hurting for it, and then uh, you know a couple a uh, year what uh, a year later they came out with the App Store, and uh, it was pretty empty at first, but you know it, it, it yes. got better. Um. Yeah, and Dave and I were talking about this last week. I think with uh, yeah. with Jeff, um, you know, my my feeling is the app store is great, but if you had your iPhone as long as the four of us had, it was like the first five years we pretty much got everything that we'll probably our base stuff that we're not, you know, we were just packing on. And nowadays, there's not that much left i mean we're still waiting for the next category of great things to have in the app store so i mean there's games there's vr things like that everybody's watching uh uh, tiktok i guess yeah yes (laughs) yes so you know um you know we're just waiting for uh some more things to come along but it it's uh yeah i i have an android device and i have a windows device and uh nothing comes close to the uh, ios app store no Chuck, what was the first app you downloaded on the App Store? Oh, Kelly, I have no idea. 
You know, I, I can really, tell you. I, you don't know? I really don't. I really don't. I'd, I'd love to tell you, oh, it was this one or that one. I, I honestly don't remember. Yeah, I don't either. I couldn't David tell you. David remembers. And I, I, I remember. Know. Shazam. Oh, really? My very first wow. app. That, yep. was, that was my second. That was close. What was your first, Kelly? My first was the one that took advantage of the gyroscopes in the 3G, and this will come as a surprise to approximately no one. When you waved your phone around, it made lightsaber noises. Oh, I remember that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I remember you guys talking about the, the early games, uh, the Tap Tap, uh, Tap Tap Revolution. Tap Tap Revolution, Tap Tap Revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah, that was a big thing, too. It was like a and, guitar, uh, it was Guitar Hero for your finger, basically, mm-hmm. as you had to go. And Monkey, monkey Ball? Super monkey ball. Super yeah, monkey yeah, yeah. Ball. And that was that was a pretty impressive one for the time too. The, the monkey ball had so the, cute. Yeah, like, it yeah. had the, the, the graphics on it. So I kind of remember that one yeah. too. In fact, yeah. here is my first phone. Is that the? Uh, three, oh wow! That's my th- my three G sitting here yeah. on my desk. Yeah. Ah, uh, nice. that was my first phone. I did. Th- I did go with three G, and I've had a, pretty much every every since everyone since. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get in until the three G either. So, okay. well, you know, I look at the app store and I, and, and like Dave said, you know, what $2 billion paid out to developers. Now I know that this might upset some developers and yes, you can please feel free to send me email um, because there still <laughs> Chuck is. Chuck looks forward to your letters. <laughs> yes. There's still debate over Apple taking as much of a cut as they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the idea that how do you make a living on the app store? And, you know, I, I guess I personally have mixed feelings about that, but I'm not a developer, so I really have no right to comment. But what I do see is that the apps, by having an app store, by developing the app ecosystem, Apple brought a whole lot of people into their universe mm-hmm. that would never have been there otherwise. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I mean, because iOS development seems to be a lot more popular, arguably a, a little bit easier, and and I'll. I wish we had a developer here to, to to correct me on that if it's wrong, but it just seemed like there was something about the phone that captured so much imagination, even for just your you know your little one trick pony apps, and that was pretty much all of them in the early days. Um, but it was good enough because, like Kelly said, you know, it you tap that one app and suddenly your device became something else entirely. Mm-hmm. And now. Uh, to, again, to piggyback on some of Kelly's comments, you know, yes, we, we have a great a great camera in the phone, and that would have been completely logical. But with the apps behind it, you can do so much more now. And especially uh, something I'm interested in is video, of course. And you know, it turns mm-hmm. this into a video camera that is much better than the typical camcorder, and uh, obviously a lot smaller and with a lot more capacity. So, you know, and that's just one little thing, one aspect to it. But I feel like it's been just really critical for the success of the iPhone and Apple um, in what at that point was looking to be kind of a, uh, a, a, we were headed toward a post-Mac environment, which at least that's what a lot of the pundits said, which I'm not sure is accurate. But anyway, um, so yeah, well, it's it, it's been an interesting ride. It, it was, it's, go ahead, Kevin, sorry. Well, the thing that the thing that makes it easy to try to have that argument is that there's a huge piece of information about Apple's 30% that we don't know, which is what it does, right? So we don't know that that Apple gets a dollar, right? Whatever that do- whatever amount, wh- wherever it comes from, like Apple gets a dollar, and so with the, you know that dollar, like 85 cents of that dollar is servers and bandwidth, and that's where like all their money is going is servers and bandwidth okay if it's really that expensive to run to you know spin up and maintain that app store then okay like maybe 30 percent doesn't sound so terrible but it sounds terrible because we don't know anything about what those numbers are for so we don't know that we don't know how much of it is paying people to write the app store stories that we see brand new every day we don't know how much of it is server cost we don't know how much of it is bandwidth you know let's say that you know whatever Apple's AWS buckets are. Like, we don't know what those cost them. We don't, you know, we don't know how much the um, the marketing piece of it is costing them or anything like that. Like, we don't have any transparency into what it is that those costs cover. All we know is they cover being in the app store. 
and that's it. And so on top of paying Apple $100 a year to be eligible to put something in the app store that costs any money, like we don't know aside from that, like you're getting $100 from me a year personally as an app store developer and you're getting 30% of everything that I sell in the app store, which, you know, when you look at it from here and you're me and you've watched a lot of mob movies, it sounds like Apple just trying to get a taste, right? So every week I got to swing by with my envelope and if it's light, I'm in trouble, right? So <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not implying Apple is mob, but, uh, but it, it feels a little that way because they're like, I get my 30%, no ifs, ands, or buts, and nobody gets to argue with me about it. feels a little mobby like mafia e ish little little tony soprano in there so that's the thing is like if apple came out and said you know 28% of our 30% is all going to server costs you know all right you know i don't i don't feel so bad about it then but if what we're really finding out is you know 12 cents of that dollar that they make you know, of, of that dollar that's their 30% cut. Like 12 cents of it goes to the actual maintenance of everything. And the rest of it just goes to making Apple have a bajillion dollars in the bank, give or take. So like, you know, like if they came out and said something like that, you know, at Dub Dub or something like, hey, developers, here's where your money's going. Here's what it's doing for you. I think people would feel a little bit better about paying it. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Linode. Need a virtual server? You can build it on Linode. Linode specializes in cloud computing, making it easy for anyone to get their website or online service up and running quickly and to keep it running. How do they do it? By providing a huge variety of one-click installs for things like WordPress, Drupal, WooCommerce, Plesk, OpenVPN, Prometheus, Arc, and many more. Then they keep it running and keep it running fast with industry-leading processors, a 40-gigabit network, and SSD storage. And if you need help deploying your site or your service, or to keep it running at peak efficiency, you can take advantage of the extensive library of guides, tutorials, a community of Linode users, a support bot, and their 24-7, 365 customer support. Find out more about Linode and all they offer, because I can't cover it all here no matter how hard I try. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and get $20 off your first server. That's linode.com slash macvoices and $20 off your first server. You've been putting off that project. Now it's time to get it done at linode.com slash macvoices and save $20 doing it. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. Ah, Kelly, you know, I, I've got to argue with you. I can't help it. I can't help it. Bring it. Okay, so first off, the $100 doesn't bother me a bit. Because there's got to be a way for people to, for, there has to be some kind of gatekeeping. Oh, no, I'm not bothered. I'm not okay. bothered at all. But that's another piece of, that's another revenue source that Apple has is like all those developers that have paid apps in the App Store are paying $100 a year to do it. Right. And and I might say, okay, there are a Which lot of development. Yeah, there are a lot of development apps and a lot of things that Apple Apple provides to developers, including you know the WWDC training. Um, and I know you can argue about you know that there's a cost associated with receiving that, and we can that's a whole other path to argue. But what I look at, I guess, at thirty percent. I mean, first of all, anybody that is in business, if if you're out there and you have a relationship with someone else, there's a cost to that relationship. Now, it, you, you know, you, and you, so plenty of places, you know, they try to strike this thing between exclusivity or ubiquity. So you go one way or the other. You either want to be everywhere, like let's just say um, a particular candy bar, so that anytime I walk into a 7-Eleven, a, a, here in the Northeast, a Sheets or a Wawa or, you know, what, I'm sorry, I don't know what you have on the West Coast. You know, I can, I can pick up that chocolate bar <laughs> and it's going to be, and it, first of all, I'm going to look for it. It's going to be there. And, you know, that's it, right? Yeah. Or you you strike something else, and I'm not coming up with a good example right now, but there are millions of them out there, where they say, you can only get our product at this store or mm -hmm. these, you know, these few stores. And so, you know, somebody in business makes a choice to go one way or the other. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing, though, is I would, I think we'll never see it, but I'd love to see what does it cost Apple to put an app in the app store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's got to go through the review process 
which, you know, there are lots of arguments over the quality of that. But the one thing that does seem to be true is that apps are looked at. Sure, sometimes things are missed, but Apple just doesn't haphazardly right. slap something up from Kelly Gamont and say, oh, it's yeah. from Kelly. I don't need to check it. You know, they, right. they check There's it. There's a labor cost associated with, with every right. single app that goes in the app store. Right. And that's right. fine. The, and I'm not arguing that that, I'm not arguing that it shouldn't be. I'm just saying if we had the numbers, I think a lot of complaining about the 30% could go away if people had more awareness of what they were getting for that cut. Yeah. And, and I guess too, you know, I, I mean, I go back your server cost, I, I think that's an interesting statement because I, when you say server cost, I hear cost of servers, right? But go well, with me on that and for a second. And, yeah. Band, bandwidth, but also the maintenance of the front end, the maintenance mm-hmm. of all the lists and all the all the coding that goes into maintaining that, maintaining that app store, all the mm-hmm. security, which Apple doubles down on, that Apple is providing mm-hmm. so that your app doesn't get you know, swapped out by somebody in the middle of the night and they're downloading not your app, but an app that will steal their information. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I I don't I don't know what the right number is. I mean, app was decided on 30%. I'm sure there's a healthy profit margin in there. And, sure. you know, full disclosure, I'm an Apple shareholder. So I hope there's a fair um, profit margin <laughs> there because I don't yeah. want to see them doing too many things that don't have a profit margin. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm not saying Apple shouldn't make money. I know Apple's in the business of making money. We all know business, Apple's in the business of making money. That's exactly what they do. That's exactly what everything's for. I totally get that. And I do not begrudge them that or anything. Like, I'm not saying take the 30% down to zero or anything like that. But just it might be nice if there were more transparency into those numbers. Like on the quarterly earnings call, if it was like, you know, this is how much revenue we took in from the app store. And they don't because they hide it in services because everything is a service now. And so that way they don't ever have to tell anybody anything. Just we made like a squillion dollars on services. Next question. So like that, that's the thing about it is if they would just come out and say, then I think a lot of people would probably have their concerns addressed and like, oh, you know, I didn't think about the number of man hours that go into app store review. I didn't think about uh, the number of people that have to maintain the front end and put all the images together and make sure everything looks nice in the app store, no matter which one you're look, what device you're looking at it on, from an iPhone 6 up to an 11 or an 11 Pro Max or whatever. Like, it has to look nice on every one of those devices, and that can be hard. So, like, I think a little bit more of a look into where that stuff goes would be nice. David, am I wrong? Uh, because I... I I'm not I resent the. We're disagreeing, Chuck. That's what I'm saying. Well, I, but I'm, but I'm. If if you believe in that kind of transparency, I think we may be, because I just don't know why someone that's in business has to be that completely transparent. Oh, I don't expect them ever yeah. to be. No. I hope that maybe they would say, you know, half that money goes to servers and bandwidth and the people that review the apps. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Like, I don't expect them to tell me to the penny. I don't expect it to ever be anything like that. But it would be nice if they would come out and say, like, do you know how many servers and how much bandwidth we are actually talking about when it comes to the app store? And that one of the things we fold into that is everybody's over the air iOS updates. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, like, I think that that if there were a little bit more awareness of that, I think that that a lot more people would give Apple a lot more credit than grief over that 30%. I mean, that that's what I would agree with. I mean, 30%, you look at that number. Yeah. It, it seems, it seems like it's very, uh, it's very high. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, if you had some explanation of where all that's going to, yeah, I think everybody would probably f- would feel a little more comfortable um, to why Apple is charging so much. I mean, let's face it. We know Apple charges a lot for their products and, and we know yeah. that they profit a lot because the products are tend to be a little higher than most. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, having that type of full disclosure, at least, at least letting a developer know, okay, where's all that money that I'm paying into going to when you take it, where does it go to? Um, and, but thing is, I don't, I don't see Apple ever doing that. It's that's, no. that's the, that's the, uh, the sad part of it. Um, but I, I think, yeah, it, it would be nice. It would, it would really definitely be nice. <laughs> Warren, help me out. I, I mean, right now it's two to one. Um, you want to even it up or are you going to pile on? Um, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction, I think, in this. I don't think 
the 30% matters that much to Apple at all. And I think Apple's deal is they want to be an exclusive club and their developers have to pay a 99. You have to be a developer. You have to be in a club. You have to pay a 99. And, um, and, you know, we're going to charge you 30% of whatever you put in there because that's going to weed out some of the, 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 the amateurs who probably don't want to, you know, they don't want in their little club and it works because, you know, then, you know, <laughs> when it becomes too uncontrolled, you got a Google play store and when it becomes too mismanaged, you have a windows store uh, that didn't work either. So Apple basically said, we're going to write the rules. You have to be a member. We have to, you know, monitor what you're doing. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of costs, you know, with it, but I think it's more their way of control than, than profit. And I think it's their way to, to keep the app store desirable. Uh, they, they want a, a, a desirable place to be. Um, so they want people who, you know, you know, write junk not to be there. And they want people who, um, who will, you know, follow the rules. And if you follow the rules, you'll make money um, less 30% of what you make. I don't think, you know, I don't think they're right or wrong for charging 30%. I think, you know, um, I think actually if they lower it now, I think they're, they're probably uh, going to, you know, open it up in ways they don't want to open it up. I think more people will that been holding off will come in. That's an interesting perspective, and I, it, it appeals to me. I like it because I think there's a lot of truth. I didn't want to be the one to bring up anybody else's app store and talk about what a disaster they are, but thank you for but opening that door. They're a disaster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. They're, I mean, and I don't know if Google Play, I don't know what their rules are. I don't know if you have to be a, you know, a, a considered developer. Um, you know, maybe somebody else knows how to get an app into the Google app store. I am a hundred percent sure it's a lot easier than putting it in the Apple app store. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know how easy it is. Um, I do know there's a lot of crap in the Google app store. There's a lot of adware stuff. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things that you'll install that says it's free, but it will just cover your phone with uh, ads all over the place. Um, Ram cleaner. We, That's one that like every person I know with an Android device has. Installed. Yeah. So like, Ram cleaner, you know, memory cleaner, something like that. And it's just commercial. <laughs> So, and I do IT support and I, I support some Android people and every day, you know, not enough, enough people come up to me and said, <laughs> you know, my, you know, my, my, my uh, Android tablet's broken because uh, the thing came up and says, uh, you got all these junk and you got all this uh, RAM problems and memory issues and viruses. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just click out of that. You know, it's just a pop-up page coming up. Apple does its, you know, Apple doesn't do that. You know, can you get there from a Safari uh, site on uh, Apple device? Yes, but they, you know, they're trying to work on that too. But it's a mess. So getting back to it, and the Windows Store failed because that's a mess in the other direction. It, it didn't, it didn't attract people. And a lot of the attraction of the iOS Store is what I'm saying. It's, it's almost like it's almost like a badge of honor to get your app into the App Store, the iOS App Store, uh, mm -hmm. and and developers want to. You know, they feel proud of it. You, you'll hear, you'll listen to some of the, the podcasts of developers who get, you know, they're happy that their app is in there. Um, so I think Apple wants to keep that up. And I think that's what they're doing is, is going to do it. Good. Again, good, good. Two, I guess a bunch of different perspectives here. Kelly and Kelly and David seem to be in one camp. I guess I'm in another camp. And it's two to one just, to one. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, I'm know, my own camp. I'm a band I'm, camp. I'm, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sign a treaty with Warren, and then we're gonna come back and talk to you guys. <laughs> so. Uh huh. That wraps the first part of our discussion about the Apple App Store at twelve. Next time we'll get into more of these discussions, along with naming some of our favorite apps of all time. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, 
free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.